Hey everyone, I'm Eric EV7, and today I am bringing you Can It Clash. Two of your favorite CRL pros are about to go head to head in a very unique best of three. What makes this format so unique? Well, for the first match, they will be using two decks that I chose. I chose these because not only are they fairly new in the new meta, but I think they're extremely fun to not only play, but to watch. So I'm excited to see how they do. In the second match, we actually asked them, what are your favorite decks? But they didn't know we were going to swap them. So they will be playing each other's favorite decks. And in the third match, they finally got to choose their own decks. But there's a catch. They have to be either used in the previous CRL monthly qualifiers or in the previous CRL finals. So let's get right into it because I'm extremely excited. Right before we get into the action, I think it's important for you guys to know who's playing. Let's start off with Air Surfer. Air Surfer just finished placing top three in the CRL monthly finals. And before that, we've seen him in the 2020 summer edition of the No Till World Championships place top two as well as being one of crl's veterans and on the other side we have wallace wallace was someone that came into the league last season as a rookie ended up being a world finalist had one of the best seasons you could possibly ask out of any rookie and this season he's been doing it on ladder crl qualifiers so i'm excited to see a veteran and someone that's more of a rookie go at it in this format and here we go. We're into the first match of this best of three. Let me remind you guys that I chose these decks. They are decks that maybe you haven't seen yet or you haven't seen much of in CRL or in uh, previous metas because they do use cards that weren't used as much before. I don't want to tell you guys exactly the decks just yet because I want you to enjoy the match and see for yourself. But whenever we do see Zappies on the bottom with Fireball, it's usually a Fireball bait deck. And on the top, Ice Wizard usually comes with the Tornado with the baby dragon and it could either be something of the electro giant it could be a graveyard it could be either one of those decks usually without the bomb tower though now that it's nerfed we're gonna see a lot of different variants so we see the goblin cage here and on the bottom of flying machine that's gonna get tornadoed flying machine one of those troops that if you don't have good defenses or a fireball of your own to defend could be a very very big problem nice dark prince here to take care of the hoggies although it focuses on just one so that splash is actually not doing much and he takes over 400 damage on one single hoggies push here we go a troop that i wanted to see play today and that's why i chose this deck a mother witch recently buffed recently in the meta and as you can see every time it kills one of those troops or it enchants one of those troops and then it dies while it still has the enchantment it spawns a little huggy as you can see again there but on the top he does have a very defensive deck it is a very defense heavy deck and i see that if he can continue to defend 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 over time this does get better for wallace what air surfer needs to do here is add on pressure he knows that the deck on the top does not have fireball it usually comes with lightning now that we know that it is an electro giant deck with the dark prince being used and as long as he doesn't give him any real lightning value with uh, the Mother Witch and the Flying Machine, he should be able to continue pushing here. He wants this to end as soon as possible because if this gets into Triple Elixir, I don't see how Air Surfer can stop any of the pushes. Not even Triple Elixir. If this goes on for too long in Double Elixir, what we're going to see here from Wallace is continually defend, defend, defend until he can set up a counter push with at least two troops. I would like to see a Baby Dragon and a Dark Prince or a Baby Dragon and an Ice Wizard at least on the field before he drops that electro giant let's see him keep going on this match for now it's leaning towards air surfer but we see the first electro giant on the field it's gonna come accompanied with that goblin cage that should take care of the zappies unless he puts something else down there's one hit on the zappy the other zappy lives and as i said i would like to see an ice wizard behind that as along with the bar barrel and he tries to do a little split lane push but there's just too much splash on the left and that Electro Giant is also disappearing quite quickly to the Elite Barbarians, another card that we weren't used to seeing very often. But the splash of the Baby Dragon, the splash of the Ice Wizard, and absolutely everything that gets hit by the E-Giant as well evaporates. I would like to see a Lightning here. There it is, Lightning down on the field, and that is GG, well played. Like we spoke about earlier, if Wallace can just mount those counter pushes, I didn't think that Air Server could actually defend. He took a little bit too long to get into the game to start getting aggressive, and that did not play to his favor. Wallace takes game number one, and before hopping into game number two, let's talk a little bit about these decks so that you guys at home, maybe you're interested, maybe you want to play them. Wallace played this perfectly, right? He has a deck that's very, very defensive. He has a deck that consists of Ice Wizard, Baby Dragon, Cage, 
Bernardo. And his main point of attack is an eight elixir card. When your card is that expensive, you need to pick and choose exactly when you want to go in. And that usually comes being in double elixir. So for the first two minutes of this match, he knew what he had to do. Just defend. With this deck, you have lightning. So if you can get extreme value for that lightning on an offensive push, seeing as it is double elixir and you will have time to do it, you will win the game. So just be patient if you want to use that deck. And on the other hand, you have a very bait fireball heavy deck, right? You have the mother witch. So don't be scared to put that mother witch next to your princess tower to bait out that fireball because if it does come out of your opponent's hand, that flying machine is going to get a lot of value as long as um he doesn't have any troop on it play it on your side try to tank it make him overspend to take care of that one troop and if he does it you can get a lot of hits not only on the tower but on troops and get a lot of elixir value out of it so i hope you enjoyed these first matches these first decks and let's get into the second one and all right here we are in the second match let me remind you what this match consists of i don't know what decks they chose just yet but it is wallace playing air surfer's favorite deck and if i had to you know take a wild guess i'd expect an expo here it could be the expo inferno and on the other side it is air surfer playing wallace's favorite deck after knowing air surfer for so long i know he loves expo he's one of the best expo players and i think in the first or second global tournament he got the most amount of wins ever with expo so i'd expect to see that and wallace one of the better hog rider mortar players it is expected right this is something that we've seen wallace play in crl we've seen him play in ladder we've seen him play all over and i really really like this deck it's extremely fast but also very defense heavy and can defend almost against any different type of archetype and it might be the reason why it's his favorite deck he's going to continue pressuring with these hogs and i love the placement on the bats if you place the bats towards the middle they usually end up tanking at least once or twice for the hog rider on the infernal tower he needs to play them a little bit more in the middle though and be careful with that ice spirit right because if that ice spirit does get onto the bats it is a 142 elixir train and that infernal tower will take care of the hogs so he needs to be really careful with the pushes he makes here good mortar offensive not only will it bait defense but if he doesn't overspend on this he will actually end up taking some tower damage the ice spirit is no longer in cycle so it could it could be a great moment to play the hog now that you can tank with the bats onto the infernal tower right the mortar is on tower twice musketeer goes down now that he's overspending taking damage as well not being able to put down any expos there it is the first expo on the bottom right tanked by the valk and here's the hog he can't put an infernal tower because it would be tanked by the bats he has to fireball skellies which is not a bad defense but that is two hits the expo also evaporates to the valk because the defense was forced he couldn't defend it because of how well air surfer timed the offense if you can go offensive and force the defense that means he cannot defend his own expo there we're gonna see a high infernal tower and this is just being played perfectly by air surfer everything is going according to plan that earthquake onto the infernal tower will make sure it's gone but more importantly he predicted that mega minion with his bats which kept the musketeer alive and he's gonna force another defense on the right hand side if that goes down early enough the musketeer should get onto the infernal tower as well and make sure that that is gone defensive mortar here he's just playing it safe at this point he knows that he has a faster cycle he knows that he has that um earthquake that could get on to the tower anytime he wants it and i expect to see it here if an infernal tower is dropped no infernal tower the hog is not being tanked by the valk a little bit of a mistiming misplay there but it's being very very difficult for wallace to even get in the game every time he wants to expo air surfer is mounting good pushes making sure to keep up the pressure and not huddling back right we've seen a lot of players before when they play against expo decide to over defend or just stay on the defensive side and it becomes very very difficult because expos keep on cycling 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 until eventually you're out of place you don't have the right defenses and that expo ends up connecting yes he does have an advantage because he has earthquake and there is no tesla on the other side it's actually an infernal tower so it's a little bit of a heavier defense or a little bit of a heavier uh push every time he wants to go with that x boom but we have to give it to air server he's playing it well this is not his deck choice remember these are each other's favorite decks so to be able to play your opponent's favorite deck this well 
definitely proves something about air surfer and on the other end i just don't think wallace has that much he could do right he has a fireball so it's not that he can rocket cycle he has an infernal tower that even though it is a great defense against hogs with this valk and the hog and he actually decides to go double mortar here if that inferno goes down that's not going to be enough and the knight actually pushes the hog onto the left of the tower so it doesn't get distracted by the infernal tower either everything is going wrong for wallace or everything is going right for air server this match is just about over as long as something crazy does not happen which it shouldn't right at this point just defend if your air server there's 30 seconds left you have earthquake if needed you have a hog for the expo as well and that's exactly what he did he knew that if wallace wanted to push it would be on the right hand side so he threw down a hog in case that expo went down and on the other side just put a valk to force out a little bit of a defense to make sure that tower wasn't gone i expect an earthquake here just to finish off this game there it is earthquake valk snowball gg well played great match for air surfer very well played and if we're going to talk a little bit about matchup yes it is 100 percent in air surfer's favor but applauding him for playing wallace's deck so well not something that he's used to playing in the past and in previous matches so a little bit of tips before we go into the next match just like we did previously when you're going to play one of these two decks, it is very important to know the mortar is not usually made to connect on the tower, right? We did see it connect once or twice, but when you play this deck, if you play that at an offensive level, what it does is it forces defenses that they would usually use against the hog. So don't be scared to put that mortar offensively and then just leave it. You don't actually have to over defend it. You don't have to try and get it to connect. No, just force out some defenses and then go in with, with the hog push. Make sure you always have that earthquake hog combination. And if it's not in hand try to spend a little bit of the time of the game trying to get that cycle to the right place to make sure that when you do get later in the game you could use both together and on the other side the expo in this matchup just didn't really do much it couldn't do much if you do want to use it in general though this deck is extremely solid you do want to play a little bit more defensive than if you would have had a tesla expo just because the cycle is a little bit slower and the defenses aren't as easy as well as when you play an inferno high up with an expo it's not as effective as a tesla a tesla has a higher rate of dps and it's very very quick to switch targets on the other hand the inferno only works against tanks right so you need to pick and choose your moments a lot better with this type of um, expo deck as you would the traditional one. And I hope that helped, but we still have one more match and these decks are the ones that they chose. Game number three, who is going to take the first ever Canic Clash? These decks were chosen by the players and they are decks that have been either used in the monthly qualifiers or in the monthly finals from the previous not only theirs, but opponents possibly. So first we're gonna see on the bottom, a nice loon deck with recruits. We have seen this a bunch in the past. And when you look up top and you see an infernal tower, it's not looking great for air surfer. You never wanna have an infernal tower when you're going up against recruits, just because it doesn't really do what you need it to do. If you would have had a bomb tower, if you even would have had a goblin cage, it would be a lot better. But when that infernal tower locks onto each individual recruit, it takes forever. And that might open up a lot of game for the balloon especially if he can combine it with the lumberjack on the top side we do have a minor control minor poison deck so he needs to get a lot of chip before this gets into double possibly triple elixir because i just don't see him being able to defend it right now he did get a minor on tower so it is a little bit of damage and he was able to defend this fairly easily but like i said this is air server's game until it gets to double elixir right now that cycle is over we're gonna be seeing this match played in very cycle motion match right what do i mean by that whenever minor is in cycle up top for air server you're gonna see a very defensive play by wallace and as soon as that minor is taken care of what is gonna happen recruits and lumberjack and balloon on the bridge and then we're just gonna see that over and over again it's a matter of can air surfer get enough chip to where he can play defensive for the rest of the game and hold on right there was a very good defense with the electro spirit to reset the minor and make sure it doesn't get any hits and an inferno dragon being played at the back right just playing defensive he saw the knight he knows that he has nothing in that deck for an infernal dragon so i wouldn't be surprised if this forces out a little bit extra of a defensive uh 
cycle on the right maybe a minor maybe he has to use the uh, delivery with an electro spirit i'm not sure what he has to do but if he does use the minor that is great for wallace and he does there's the miner, and now Wallace knows there is no attack coming. Let me go balloon. Let me go lumberjack. And that left side is has a lot of troops to, for that infernal tower to deal with. And I'm not sure if he's noticed, but the right hand side also has two recruits on it, and that is about 700 damage taken. That is a lot of damage when you're playing a minor control deck. That cannot happen. But at the same time, there's not much he could do, right? He used absolutely everything, including the miner on defense so this is looking pretty pretty rough for him i'm not sure how air server can come back but i hope he has a plan this is the deck that he chose so i'm assuming he knows how to play it a lot better than i do and he can maybe pull something out at the end of this game raged up balloon raged up recruits and if that second recruits tank for the loon there it is snowball coming in and just one tiny bit of health is what saves air surfer from taking a balloon hit on the left side but as we see every time the cycle moves on every time the time ticks down and it goes more and more double elixir more towards that triple elixir it's becoming harder and harder for air server to defend and that's a little bit because of the infernal tower even a tesla would have been better here but it is not what he has he has to deal with it somehow good electro spirit to make sure that balloon doesn't get a second hit and we're gonna go recruits in the back again why because he knows that there is no minor in cycle so he can play calm he can go fully push from the back knowing there's nothing coming at him on the other end here we go this is a very strong push lumberjack on the left including the fisherman it forces out a delivery but that infernal dragon is staying alive fisherman pulls the knight here good electro spirit to take care of those skellies and it's gonna get the fisherman onto the infernal tower which makes sure the loon only needs one hit and here we go hit from the loon forces out of delivery again out of air surfer and i don't think he's even gonna be able to get a minor in here a, a minor push because he knows that he will not be able to defend heads up play by wallace to fisherman predict on the right hand side but now how do you defend you decided to go a little bit offensive and i just don't see you having enough troops that minor is not available on defense lumberjack coming in electro spirit just not enough he has an electro spirit of his own and i'm not sure if that is actually going to get tanked for i don't believe it will but it is raged up that inferno dragon does enough as well it forces out a second inferno dragon out of him that is the positive side of air server's deck how quickly it cycles but there's just too much damage on both of his towers this is gg well played especially with that infernal tower misplacement and wallace is the winner of this match and right before we wrap this up i do want to give you some tips on playing this deck both of these decks just because they're not as traditional as the ones that you usually see in other videos or in your favorite players hands so on the top side we did see a very 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 traditional 2016 2017 deck which is not really played this uh this meta or the past metas right it's a minor poison deck how do you play this deck very simple minor chip minor chip minor chip and you want to make sure you can always have enough elixir to defend this matchup was just very very unfortunate if you run into a recruits deck especially recruits loon or recruits versus uh, recruits hoggies it is going to be a very difficult matchup other than that though you can almost defend against anything with this deck as long as you pick and choose your moments miners should only go in when either you know that they do not have elixir or when you have at least five or six elixir in hand to make sure that you can defend the counter if he defends the miner and on the other side the loon deck just play it the same way wallace played it recruits in the back super super simple um every time that you know that a push isn't coming you're allowed to recruit in the back because you, it is a, a very costly troop it is a very very heavy uh hand so if you know that he can't push and you could recruit in the back that gives you leverage to then go with the full-on lumberjack balloon inferno dragon snowball push if you have the recruits on the bridge it is a lot bigger of a problem just because of the fact that it's so heavy that you won't have enough elixir to either lumberjack with the loon or snowball that push and if he has something like bats baby dragons or inferno dragon it will not be able to get reset just because you don't have enough elixir so the way wallace plays it very very smart and for air surfer an unfortunate match and with that match wallace takes it 2-1 over air surfer in this canic clash i hope you enjoyed these matches as much as i did and i'll see you next time